Welcome to Kit's Secret Place. I am your ambassador from the Kingdom of God. Today is December the 29th, 2022. I always date these in case if you've watched them before, that way you'll know if you remember the dates. Anyway, I uh, probably won't be real long today. The last one I had was kind of short and I had a little bit of information about Christmas that uh, I wanted to share with you. And uh, I had been wondering what to share with you today and I couldn't think of a whole lot, but what had been stirring around in my spirit was the power of God. And uh, for the new year, 2023, I wanted to plant a thought in your head. Don't limit the power of God. We have no, absolutely no comprehension of how great God is, how powerful he is, and all the things that he can do. It's a, we'd be at, your brain would be just blown. Your mind would be blown if you saw, and you're going to be seeing some of these things because they are going to happen. I do believe that history repeats itself. And back when Jesus walked the earth, his disciples cast out demons. They healed people. And uh, it was amazing. It's like, you know, there was a couple of his disciples and they came upon this man and they said, look upon us. And when the man looked in their faces, they said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give to you. Rise up and walk. And the man had been paralyzed. God healed him instantly and he got up and walked. There were uh, 10 lepers. They had leprosy, which is a, it's a dreaded disease. It causes your flesh to rot and fall off of your body. And it's very contagious. And anyway, these 10 lepers came and Jesus healed all of them. But only two of them came back to thank him. Sounds like today, doesn't it? People are just so unthankful. And it says in the last days, there's a prophecy in the New Testament that says in the last days that people will be unthankful, unholy, and uh, full of uh, desires that are wrong and living wrong in the whole nine yards, everything. Even in the uh, first chapter of the book of Romans, it addresses homosexuality. And it talks in there about how men burned with lust for men and women with limp. And it says because they would not, they would not receive a belief for God. And it says that eventually God turned them over to a reprobate mind. And that means that they'll just believe anything. And and they're no matter what you say, you can't convince them of the truth. They just can't comprehend it. But anyway. God has a lot of tremendous power, and I believe we're going to see a lot of this power begin to move and flow in people's lives. I think there's going to be magnificent salvations and healings, and uh, I tell you what, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun, and of course, you know, old Slewfoot, the devil, he's going to try and want to do everything he can to get attention to himself, so I imagine him and his demons will be doing everything they can to stir up strife and hatred and uh, miserableness in general and throughout the families and throughout the earth and trying to keep all the attention on him. And the media will be uh, used by him to lie and to deceive people. And uh, we allow it to go on because we don't take a stand. You know, there's an old saying, a person that doesn't stand for anything will fall for something. And it's important that we make our stand. you got to know what God wants us to make a stand. Well, if you never read your Bible, you're not going to know what he wants you to take a stand for and against. And uh, there's a lot of things that people just, they don't know because they don't read their Bible. People say, oh, that book is not relative for today. Oh, yes, it is. That's what they choose to believe. If you'll remember way back when I first started this, I said the most precious gift that God ever gave to mankind was the gift of choice. You get to choose what you believe. You get to choose what you want and what you do. And in the reverse, what you don't want, what you don't believe, and all that. There's a young man, I have a friend of mine, and he has a gentleman that he's been talking to about the Lord, and this, this guy professes himself to be an atheist. Uh, and that means they don't believe in God. I don't know how he thinks 
everything got here. I guess he believes in that. Years and years and years ago, there was a teaching called evolution that was bought into the school systems and it was bought and sold by humanity. Everybody believed it. Well, most everybody believed it and accepted it. And when they accepted that teaching, it really diminished the value of life. That's why people can be convinced into believing that a baby in the womb is just a blob. And that when you have an abortion, all you're doing is just removing a blob. Nope. Wrong. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that when a child is conceived, it's considered a human being at conception. So when they do, when they do uh, abortions, that's murder. And of course, anybody that's had an abortion can be forgiven if they just ask God to forgive. But if you ask forgiveness with the intent that you're going to do it again, then there's no forgiveness because you're basically lying to God when you say, uh, you know, forgive me and I won't do it again. Yet, you know, full well, if you get pregnant again, you'll do it again. And the simple thing is, number one, don't have sex before marriage. Number two, if you are so weak that you can't control yourself, then you need to have contraceptives and prevent the births from happening. I, I think it's sad that little human babies go through what they go through in an abortion. But anyway, um, I was thinking today about a man named Lazarus. He was in the Bible, and he was a real good friend of Jesus. And the shortest scripture in the Bible is Jesus wept. And that was uh, concerning after Lazarus had died. And uh, anyway, he had died, and he was dead. They'd put him in the, in the grave. And back in those days, they didn't do like we do today and dig a hole and put them in it. They had caves where they would put them in a cave and put a, a huge stone over the cave door and seal it off. Well, he'd been dead, get this, four days. Yes, he had been dead four days. And Jesus went to his grave. And Jesus, in a loud voice, yelled, Lazarus, come forth. And that, that man came back to life and came out of that grave. And if he had not called his name, I imagine everybody that was dead and in the grave would have come back because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said, I'm the resurrection and the life. And that he said what he was and he said what he had the power to do. So I just want you to, uh, as they say, keep your eyes peeled, keep your ears open and watch for miracles. They're coming. Miracles are coming. If there's something you're believing the Lord for, or you're wanting really bad, pray and talk to the Lord about it because he, he can do anything. But it's got to be within his will. He's not going to do something that's not his will. And he has a good plan for your life and for everybody's life. And he wants you to walk in his plan rather than having you walk in him walk in your plan. You have a much better life. So anyway, I just wanted to share this little bit with you. And that's what I want you to enter the new year with. I'm looking to see God's power brought forth on the earth. Lord, we want to see your power brought forth. We want to see your glory come to the earth and bring forth miracles and healings and, and whatever else you want us to have. And we're looking for it with expectancy. So anyway, let me just go ahead and pray a short prayer. And then I'll end this and then I'll try and get back maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe two, three, four weeks after the new year starts. When my friend Donna can help me, we'll do, the, we'll do another one, okay? Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to fill our hearts with expectancy. Lord, help us to look for you. Help us to look for your power in the earth. Help us to look for your glory in the earth. Lord, we want to see it. We want to feel it. We want to experience it, Lord. And so, Lord, we just we thank you so much that you are all powerful and that you have the ability to do anything, even those things above and beyond what we could ask or think. Lord, we just thank you, and we give you our hearts and lives, and we say thank you, Lord, for year, the year 2022, but thank you even more, Lord, for 2023, which is right at the door, and we thank you for all the wonderful things that are going to come into our lives this coming next year. We praise you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. Love you. Don't forget.
Everybody, please ask another person to come join us at Kit's Secret Place on YouTube. Thank you.